we've got one game left on the on the schedule, and we've asked you about it throughout the season uh, when you were trying to find your own and trying to get the the defense gelling. With one game left in this season, what do you think it was? Was there a catalyst? Was there a moment that you can recognize that really got this team, the defense, together? And and yet when you guys started figuring it out for the past couple of weeks, it, it feels like you guys have found your own. So. Has, was there a specific moment where you you thought, yeah, this this is what who we are, this is our identity? You know, I, I think week in and week out, the challenges are so different based on the team you're playing and different styles of offense. And I feel like it was something um, throughout the season, just the different challenges, the different type of games we played that we just kind of, you know, developed, um, trying to found our chemistry, uh, guys working together. Um, I think playing Baltimore. I mean, after the games we played against them last year, I think that was a big game for us on the schedule. Uh, the first game we played them really well. And I think with all that, with all those games that you play like that, I think guys get confident. And I think the last couple games of the year, I think the guys really played more consistently. You said something uh, about, you know, giving them a fuller menu as the <laughs> season went on and as you felt more comfortable with them. Where does that menu sit right now for you? How much were you able to incorporate with these new guys? Um, we definitely got more into the menu, and it's just one of those things where there's a lot of things you want to do, but it's how much can the guys handle. Um, you know, I'm not using everything uh, that that we have defensively, but it definitely got much more into our package, especially the last couple of games. Thanks, Cam. Scott Patrick is next. Um, just how good has Jadavian been for this year? Been for you this year? And just kind of how key is he to what you want to do up front? Yeah, he. I think he played really well for us this year. Um, you know, he battled through some of the injuries, but I think if you ask him, it's probably the healthiest he's felt in a long time. Um, I think the production is really good. Uh, he played really well for us, you know, in the last game. Um, you know, I don't know what, what his future has in hold for him, you know what I mean? But I, I definitely like him being part of our defensive front. Well, I was going to ask you that. I mean, if you talk to him about it or – you know, organizationally about, hey, this is a guy we need, we need to have back? Yeah, I haven't had those discussions yet. You know, that's something, you know, in the offseason we'll definitely, uh, you know, talk about. Um, but I think, again, this space on what he's done this year, um, you know, from a production standpoint, I think the things he's added in our locker room, uh, the D-line gelling, I think all those things are positives for him. We'll just see where it goes. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Dale Ryder, you're up. Yeah, Joe, kind of uh, piggybacking a little bit off uh, Cameron's question, you know, last offseason, it, it was apparent you guys really felt you needed to to make some upgrades roster wise to to fill some needs. And based on just kind of how you guys have come together defensively this year, you know, a lot of the new faces that were brought in were brought in on some some really short contracts. So could you just maybe, you know, touch on the the challenge of trying to bring a lot of these guys back and uh, keep and or establish that core uh, around guys like Denzel and Miles? Yeah, I think we did a good job. I mean, really, the first two years here, we had to add a lot of guys to free agency. You know, I think the heart and soul of what you try to do, you know, whether offense defensively is, is really through the draft. And you just add those final touches and those final pieces, you know, in free agency. Um, and there's going to be turnover. I mean, it's just the nature of, of the NFL. There's going to be turnover again. Um, we'll have new guys, new free agents. But I really feel like when you look at, um, you know, Jordan Elliott, he's been here for a couple of years. Um, you look at uh, Jeremiah, you know, JLK. Um, you look in the back end with Greg. We already have Denzel. I think there's some really good pieces, some really good cornerstones outside of obviously Miles that are there. We just have to continue to, you know, add to that, continue to develop the players we have. But I really feel good where we're at right now from a personnel standpoint. And you mentioned Denzel. Could you just kind of touch on his season, uh, you know, early in the year? Mm -hmm. I don't think he was at the level that you were hoping or he was expecting of himself. But then he turned it into a Pro Bowl season. Could you just kind of touch mm -hmm. on the, the type of year he had for you? Yeah, I think early on he was pressing a little bit. Um, you know, he's a, to me, he's a, a, a legitimate number one corner just from a 
size, length, skill standpoint, um, you know, his ability to match up and play, you know, anybody one-on-one. But I think early in the season, he was pressing too much. And the biggest thing I talked to him about is just do your job. If you do your job, play your technique, the plays will be there. So I think he settled down and just really started trusting his technique check technique, and not doing too much. And then the, the play started to come. Thank you, Daryl. Nate Ulrich, go ahead. Hey, Joe, it can kind of get, um, I guess, taken for granted because we're used to Miles getting, you know, the Pro Bowls. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we voted him our player of the year, the local riders uh, for the mm -hmm. second year. But just uh, what would you say about his 2021 season? And were there some areas of growth from him that you were um, looking for that, that you saw? And, and, you know, I know you're always challenging guys. So, yeah. What's on your uh, checklist for him as well? You know, with Miles, is just, you know, he's so dominant as a player that I think with sometimes just the guys I've been around, um, you know, over the years, you know, Vaughn Miller, you know, DeMarcus Ware, like things come easy to those guys. And uh, I think with Miles, he's so dominant. It's just really playing it at the highest level possible on every single snap. And I think you guys all saw that this year, just some of the games he was able to take over. You know, so for me, you know, moving forward with Miles, it's just let's have that that type of performance as many times as possible. You know, continue to lead this defense. You know, they'll follow you. Um, and I think he's really trying to step up and become that type of person for us defensively. And he'll continue to do that into next next season. And, you know, we haven't seen him with the sack in a few weeks. We all know it's about more than sacks, but, you know, yeah. How much is that groin injury affecting him? And he wasn't on the injury report yesterday. So you think it's better? Can, you know, does that give you hope for a strong finish? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, is he 100%? No. But, you know, his mindset is to do everything possible to, to help this team win. And uh, I know a few games ago, he wasn't 100%. I know you guys could see that. But I think his mindset, uh, what he means to this defense, what he's willing to do, man, is, is really important. I think the guys, the guys see that. And they really just try to, you know, play better around them. Thanks, Nate. Let's go to Mary Kay Cabot. Hey, uh, Joe, just uh, can you address the season uh, that JOK had a little bit? And now that you've mm -hmm. actually, uh, you know, seen him in action for this season, what do you feel the upside potential is? And where do you maybe see the areas of growth for him going forward? Yeah, I think it's the sky's the limit for JOK. He's so dynamic in so many different areas. Um, his ability to blitz, um, his ability to match up in coverage, make plays in space. I, th I think throughout the season, um, as he got more comfortable, um, you really saw his ability, you know, to show up in different areas at times. In college, he played really, you know, he was really out playing over the slot or he was blitzing off the edge in college. So the things we were asking him to do, it took him a little time to get it. Um, I think he really feels comfortable. Uh, you can see him, you know, in, uh, in practice being more confident. And I, I really believe the sky's the limit. I, I think he can be a dynamic player for a long time for us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mary Kay. Jeff Shadell will have our next question. Jeff, are you there? I want to ask you, too, again about uh, Greg Newsom, since we're on rookies. Yeah. How has he grown and what's the potential for him? Yeah, you know, he he's definitely another guy um, that I think he, he's improved throughout the season. And for me, just being a DB guy, coaching corners, it's always those games where you have those pre premium matchups. And I think, you know, he played throughout the season where there were some really good receivers that he had to play against and, and made some plays against them. Um, this last game, you know, we knew what type of game it was, and they went after him you know, in the RPO throws, and he stood up, I think, three times in a row and had three PBUs. So for him, you know, the confidence is there because he's he's played it against really good receivers and made plays. And I think, again, for him, he's he's a guy that's going to be here for a long time and give us a lot of good play outside the corner and inside in, in the slot. Thanks, Jeff. Next is Dan Lobby. Hey, Joe, I wanted to ask a question about Greg, too. And, and I guess this sort of applies to Denzel because – you know, that Chase Claypool matchup is tough for, you know, he's yeah. got four or five inches on him. Yeah. So, I mean, what is it about Greg and even Denzel too, that allows them to be effective against some of the bigger receivers in the league? 
they do have size and length. I and mean, some of those receivers are like that, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you know. But that corner, if you get a, a corner that's 6'1", six six, you know, they have good length. Those are the type of guys you want to match up um, against those type of receivers. And that's really one of the reasons why, you know, we looked in the draft that he was one of the guys we wanted because he did have size and length compared to some of the other guys. I think for Denzel and Greg, it's confidence. And that was the one thing, you know, with Greg when he came in, uh, very smart, very confident, um, very competitive. And I think you guys seen that show up throughout the season, just in terms of the matchups that he had to, to go against week in and week out. And then another guy that, that you sort of relied on this year, you know, Greedy Williams. Uh, you yeah. didn't get to see him last year. So I, I guess yeah. how would you assess his season, especially since he's had to step in in some tough spots? Yeah, I'm proud of Greedy. Um, you know, he's not 100 percent, you know, coming off the injury. It's just something in time that he has to continue to work work through. Um, you know, at times during the season, he got a little banged up, but he came back. Um, when we did lose Denzel at times, he had to step up, Greg it, uh, we lost Greg. He had to step up and he made big plays for us, you know, in several games um, to have those three corners, at least those three corners. That makes you feel good as a coordinator because you feel like you can call anything on, on your uh, game plan. Thanks, Dan. I'll we'll take two more. Marla right now or Scott Patrick. Marla. Yeah, Joe, just wanted to know how you felt about how Malik McDowell played without, you know, being away from the game for so long. He did a good job and I'm so happy for him. Just everything he's gone through in his life to get to this point, to have a second opportunity. And I know when we first had him, we just we didn't know. You know, there's a lot of unknown about him. But I think week in, week out, um, he be he trusted the coaching. I think Coach Kiffin and Coach Gary did a great job with him. Um, you know, and I tell you, I refer to him as Baby Yui. He just has that you know natural strength, and you saw it at times. I think for him to go through a a normal off season where it's strength and conditioning, um, you know, taking care of his nutrition, um, going through the defense, hearing it from scratch and building. I think this, I think for him too, I think he can, he can be a dominant player as a defensive lineman in this league for a long time as well. Thank you. Thanks, Marla. Final one, Scott Patrick. Hey, Joe, when you said Denzel was a legitimate number one, did you know, did you feel 100% about that before this season or did he kind of prove that to you at a new level? No, I thought that, you know, just I've, I've always kept track of every DB since 2006 that I ever evaluated. And, you know, you remember the guys who were the top guys coming out. And when you look at him from a, you know, from a height length standpoint, from the speed and from his quickness, that's what you really want in the number one corner because he can match up with big guys. He can match up with quick guys. So when you have that combination, um, you really have a chance to have, you know, a special player. And I definitely believe Denzel is that type of player. And I still feel like he has uh, areas that he can improve in and make him even better. And I know we're not going to see Burrow this week, and I don't know about the receivers. But, yeah. um, you know, when you mentioned Greedy and Greg and Denzel, mm -hmm. how important is that group when you got a team like Cincinnati with Burrow and all those guys? It's very important. This league is all about matchups. Do you have the ability to win your one-on-ones week in and week out? And as I mentioned earlier, when you have three corners – you feel like you can go one, two, three and match up with anybody put on the field. And that's what gives me confidence, you know, especially with, with what those guys have done so far this season. Thank you, Scott. Coach Woods, appreciate the time today. Yeah, you're welcome.